It's a lull in the Syrian regime's ground offensive to recapture Idlib province, the last rebel stronghold in the country. Even as airstrikes backed by Russia and Iran continue, and with our U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley warning Damascus and its allies against using chemical weapons. What we told, um, you know, the Syrians, the Russians, and the Iranians was, look, twice we have warned you not to use chemical weapons, twice you have used it, and twice President Trump has acted. Don't test us again, because I think the odds are very much against them. Retired Force Star General Jack Keane is chairman of the Institute for the Study of War and a Fox News senior strategic analyst. Before I talk about the lull, I do want to have you, you comment about this issue of chemical weapons and the possible use of them again. Listen to what John Kerry said on this program yesterday. We said we got 100 percent of the declared weapons mm -hmm. out, which is what the Organization for the Prevention of Chemical Weapons was able to track. Mm -hmm. We knew that Assad had kept some and we tried to go to the U.N. Security Council, and unfortunately, Russia played games, and we didn't right. get there. And now, sir, that we have the situation where Assad has said that they are willing to use them again, uh, but the United States pushing back very strongly with a warning. Yes, yeah, certainly. And I, I hope at this time, if they use them again, we conduct a considerably more comprehensive strike than what we've been doing. We should have shut down their air power entirely, which is their delivery means primarily, and also shut down their artillery. But to be fi frank about it, Conventional bombs kill 95 percent of the civilians and, and the, uh, the rebels that are on the ground. That's a good reminder, absolutely. So tell us about what you know about this lull in the campaign. Something is going on. Yeah, it's pretty significant. They've actually shut the air campaign down as well. And what, what's taking place, as best we can assess, two things primarily. One, this is supposed to be a de escalization zone. In other mm -hmm. words, no fighting take place. The Turks and the Russians agreed to this. Russia has always violated this. So the Turks have uh, troops that are on the circumference of Idlib province. They have moved more troops in there. That has become a deterrent for the Russians. They're also getting prepared to move additional uh, opposition forces into Idlib province from the northern part of Syria. Turks are going to do that. The other thing is what the United States has been organizing with our allies is economic sanctions on Russia if they actually conduct a ground offensive, mm -hmm. having nothing to do with chemical weapons. If they conduct this ground offensive, a humanitarian crisis, we're going to increase the sanctions. Those two things, at least for the time being, have shut down this offensive. Do you still have a concern about possible, uh, and it's a deconfliction zone for a reason, we don't want to have an accident between one of ours and one of theirs? No, no, we know how to do that. We've been doing that for, for five, six years now. We, we can stay out of, we can deconflict. Mm -hmm. It's a de-escalation zone, which mm -hmm. means we weren't supposed to fight there. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that uh, we had arranged with the Russians in the South, Se Secretary Tillerson did, and that's where the last offensive took place, another Russian violation. In the meantime, Russia is planning on doing some war games of its own uh, with China? It's pretty significant. I mean, what, what this really is, is we, they haven't conducted an exercise of this magnitude since the early 1980s during the height of the Cold War. And, and it's manifestation of something that has really taken place in terms of a strategic shift. We're in a great power competition with Russia and China. Both of them are considerably more aggressive, they're considerably more confident in what they've been in the past, and they're both rapidly expanding their military capabilities. Mm -hmm. So much so that the, the security of the United States is at greater risk than it's been in decades. And th the reason for that is our military superiority, which has always been the hard power backbone of our global influence, is at a dangerous degree. And it, it's challenging our ability to actually defend U.S. security interests and those of our allies. It puts it in doubt. Mm -hmm. And don't take my word for it. All the four service chiefs said as much last year in testimony before the Senate Armed Services Committee when they said we are at high risk to win a conventional war against a peer competitor. And just two weeks ago, the new Pacific Command commander, mm -hmm. Admiral Davidson, said there's no guarantee that we could win a war against China. So these are major issues. Absolutely. And, and the military buildup that we're conducting that the Trump team is doing is absolutely essential and it's got to continue. All right, General Jack King, thank you so much.